Candy Rose and Friends invite you to watch their TV show, Recovery Today. They teach from Candy's two 12-step workbooks that are scripture-based. God's written word, if acted on, empowers us to not only become addiction-free, but stay free. Powerful addiction-free testimonies are featured. Barbara, a nurse, shares the health dangers of using alcohol and drugs. To find the TV and radio networks they are on, go to recoverytodaytv.com. Hello and welcome to Recovery Today with Candy Rose, that's me, (laughs) and friends. I know, I get a little silly sometimes, but hey, it's fun being a Christian, isn't it? It is. is. This is Barbara Ferguson, and this is Becky Brewer, my friends. Each week, we bring you a lesson from these two 12-step books I wrote, Recovery Today, The Shepherd's Way, Volume 1 and 2, Using 12 Steps to Freedom. Now, today's teaching, we're using Volume 2, Lesson 1. The title is Seduced by a Liar. This is the first step using the 12 truths to freedom. Acknowledge our sin, and we cannot change ourselves. Psalms 51.3 For I acknowledge my transgressions, and my sin is always before me. Definition of transgressions is an act that goes against a law, rule, or code of conduct an offense, sin, or wrongdoing. Andy, tell them where they can get a copy of these books. Oh, yeah, I keep forgetting. Thank you, Barbara. Yeah, they're on Amazon. Actually, they're on, I have written six books. Five of them are all addiction-related. And, uh, and then another one is a Bible study, Peace, Not Stress, Trust the Shepherd. So just go to Amazon and look under my name, K spell with a K, of course, Candy Rose, and you can find the book. You might want to use it even as a support group, right. and you'd have my permission. Thanks for reminding sure. me, Barbara. Sin entered this world through seduction by the serpent, who is Satan, in the Garden of Eden. Seduce means to draw away from right, con- right conduct or belief, to corrupt or to lead astray from chastity. Chastity means purity in conduct. Mm-hmm. So it's drawing you away from doing what's right. Yes. Seduction means the act of enticing from virtue by promises. You know, uh, Satan is really good at, at, at trying to show us that something bad is really good. He's, yes. he's the deceiver. Yes. He mm-hmm. likes to deceive good. us. Yes, yes. And virtue means conformity to a standard of right, morality, or a particular moral excellence. When Adam and Eve didn't obey God, it brought sin into the world, causing all of us to be born into sin and bondage, which is sin- slavery to a sinful nature. It's interesting to note that sin started out by only eating a piece of fruit. That doesn't seem to be that big of a deal, does it? For instance, people who have never left a, let a very immoral life, never addicted to drugs, never committed adultery or murder, may not even think of themselves as a sinner. And Becky, what caused their action to make them become sinners? It was the disobedience um, is what it was. It was disobedience to what God had told them not to do. Can we honestly say we have never disobeyed what's written in God's word? Romans 3.23 tells us all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And that's why people who regard themselves as a good person need to acknowledge that they are sinners and need Jesus to forgive them of their sins. Yes. Amen. When we hear the word seduce or seduction, we usually think of sexual behavior. And that portrait is not entirely, entirely true, but of course, that is one of his Satan's favorite enticements. However, the devil has many forms of other seducing spirits. Throughout the Bible and right up to today, he has been promising false peace, false joy, and mm-hmm. false happiness. Yes. In our quest for love, acceptance, careers, etc., Following the all-American dream, we mm-hmm. become seduced by his counterfeit offers. Yes. The enemy of our souls entices us with all kinds of things to ultimately lead to our destruction. And they don't even have to start out as bad things. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Sometimes they can be a good thing. Sometimes, um, for instance, this is an extreme example, but someone can be a pastor and he can really love the Lord and become very successful, and his church can grow very large. And all of a sudden, 
pride starts coming in Mm. and he starts, he quits thinking about that God's doing this and thinks I'm doing this Mm -hmm. and it's because of me. Mm -hmm. And, and that's a sin. That's a, you know, that's pride is a big sin that many of us fall into. So, um, Satan just uses a lot of ways to get to us and he's always looking for what's counterfeit to what God gives us. Yes. Amen. And John 10, 10 says, the thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. But listen to what Jesus says in the next part of this verse. I have come that they may have life and yes. they may have it more abundantly. Yes. That's good. Yes. That's good. And I'm going to go back up for just a second, Barbara. And, and because um, I was just thinking as you were uh, reading uh, that, that paragraph about... Um, the American dream and we all become uh, seduced by counterfeit things and counterfeit offers is that uh, it's not necessarily the person. It doesn't have to be a person seducing you. Mm-hmm. It can be, you can be seduced by a lifestyle. Mm-hmm. Yes. Um, yes. And so it can be the, a, a, yeah. a lifestyle that's glorified. Mm-hmm. Um, for example, the lifestyle that, that I was in was, was very glorified in the beginning because it was a drug lifestyle. It was the nightlife. It was, um, you know, it was just, it was glorified, but it was tormenting yes. when I actually got into it. So I was seduced by this lifestyle that looked wonderful that and looked looked, good. Yes. looked really good and looked fun and was full of partying. But yes. then when I got in it, it was nothing but torment. But it doesn't even have to be the drug lifestyle because you even said here in our quest for careers, yes. power, yes. money, yes. all of those types of lifestyles that don't have anything to do with drugs can be a seducing, yes. can be a seducing um, thing that pulls you um, into the world and mm-hmm. away from the Lord. Putting um, that first instead of God. Right. Yeah. So Jesus Christ is the only higher power and the solution for a new life free from the slavery to sin and addictions. We find why we need to be saved, how to be saved, and how to maintain a godly lifestyle by the truth found in the Holy Scriptures. Second Timothy 3.16 says, All Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, reproof, correction, for instruction in righteousness. Um, I, I love that part about correction because one of the biggest things after being saved was, you know, you've got to allow godly people to come up beside you and correct you. You've got to allow that. And that goes along with the pride. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? That's when right. we do, when we, when we do something that doesn't line up with God's word, yes. we have to allow godly people to come up beside yes. us and correct us and not be so prideful, yeah. but be humble about it and accept it. Yes. So John eight thirty two says, and you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. Truth, if acted on, That's right. brings That's freedom, right. yes. peace and okay. happiness yes. that you've been looking for. Yes, and I think of Becky when uh, her part of her testimony is was when she was in that fifth prison, yeah, and she was in lockdown for twenty two hours, twenty two hours a day with a Bible, yes, and she got saved, yes. reading the word. So yes. the truth literally can did set, you free. set her free, by but she acted on it. Yes, she cried out to God, yeah, and by that crying out to God was a. F- action. Yes. And because of that, the Holy Spirit came and in. And then maintained. Like we have responsibility yes. past that. You yes. know what I mean? And then maintain it. Said yes. um, somewhere I just read and maintain yes. the godly lifestyle. Yes. So I had responsibility once I got home to, to do some action of my own. I had to act on the freedom that I was given. Yes. So that was important too. Yeah. Amen. Mm-hmm. All right, Barbara. Well, I can relate to this. and I have several thoughts going through my mind. Um, one of the first things is, is that Satan is not very, um, he doesn't come up with things on his own. What he does is just counterfeit everything God Hmm. does. So for every good thing God has, Satan has something just like it, Mm -hmm. but it's counterfeit. And another thing is that sin never starts out looking bad. Because if it did, who would sin? If you, if you, uh, you know, if you saw, if you saw methamphetamine, for example, and you immediately saw that what was going to happen to you, mm. you wouldn't touch it. Right. But yeah. you don't. You see people having fun yeah. and laughing yeah. and staying up all night. And you think, hey, that looks like fun. I want to try it too. Yeah, yeah. And um, adultery, it you know, it seems like fun. You know, it's pretty exciting probably. But then you don't think about 
what happens when your spouse finds out and you lose your family and your children oh, yes. and sometimes your job. And oh, so, boy. Yes. you know, it's just so much how, you know, Satan makes it look good. And then the other thing, what Becky was talking about is that you have to, you have to be willing to take correction. <clears throat> but also I'd like to talk about taking that a step further and that's having an accountability partner. And like Becky and I, um, talk a lot and, um, we hold each other accountable. Mm-hmm. Um, we're not. A, we both have permission to say whatever we want to to each other. Right. And um, and that's a good thing. You need yes. someone in your life that will speak the truth to you in love, mm-hmm. yes, and not so. just go along with whatever Ooh, you're doing. That's good. Yeah, yeah that that's is good. Really good. My I wrote my autobiography, and the title of it is "Spirits of Seduction." Yeah. Mm-hmm. Free at last, and. When, and when I did look up those words about seduction, it's because he does have those phony counterfeit promises that make everything seem so like so much fun. Mm-hmm. And the Bible does say the sin is pleasurable for a season. Right. I know for me, back when I was 18, I got invited. Uh, uh, my girlfriend was working for a, um, a dancing agent in Chicago. Uh, you can tell how old I am. It was go-go dancers. They don't have go-go dancers now. They have, they, have, they have strip clubs, which I ended up working in a strip club later and even owning a strip business. But uh, I remember when the first time I went to the dancing agent to his uh, studio, here's all these girls lined up in these uh, a, a long dressing table with the fancy lights like you'd see it in Hollywood. And they had all these beautiful sequined and feathered costumes. And, and it looked like Las Vegas outfits. And uh, ours, I wasn't raised in church. and I didn't know any better. I just thought, wow, that looks awesome. Devil doesn't show you then how degrading that you right. end up feeling, especially when you walk off that stage. And then you're having to deal with the men to hustle them for drinks. And that's just a little example because uh, later through my life then, you know, I ended up indulging in all kinds of things, even prostitution and, like I said, having my own strip business. Addictions. Addictions of all types are killing precious people. Overdose of opioids is on the rise. Prescription drugs and alcohol cause families to be torn apart. Everyone suffers, including the children especially the children. If you or a loved one want help, go to addictionfaithprograms.com to find faith-based resources. There is help. There is hope. And now we're going to show you a testimony. Hello, I'm Heather Riggs, 633 Recovery Women's Director. And I grew up in a home of drugs. I grew up in a home of sexual abuse. And I grew up in a home of my parents being the first ones to give me drugs and alcohol. So I carried a lot of shame. I carried a lot of guilt, a lot of hurts, a lot of burdens that nobody should ever have to deal with, go through any of the traumas like that. So, of course, I stuck with the drugs, stuck with alcohol, because that covered all the shame, all the guilt. It just numbed me. And I didn't really have to face anything, but growing up in a home like that, you know, there's no direction, there's no Jesus, there's no foundation of anything. So that's what I, that's what I turned to, to cope. Um, I married Cain at 19 and for 14 years, we did drugs and alcohol together. Um, sin's fun for a season, you know, and that's what we did. Uh, every day we had to have something. Every day there was alcohol, pills, everything. And um, there were, I was, we sold drugs and uh, with my parents and stuff. And then there come to a point after the 14 years that it just got really bad. You know, it wasn't it was our bodies having to have it then. And it got real bad that my mom tried to kill herself. So that was the point of our turnaround. That was the point of we saying together that, We're done. This is it. We're tired of this lifestyle. It wasn't getting us anywhere to where the only thing it was getting us was possible divorce. We were done. And that is where it changed for us and for me. That's when I accepted Jesus as my Savior. That's when the restoration started with me. It's been a journey for sure of the healings because then I had to learn 
you know, without the drugs and alcohol, who I was. I didn't know who I was beyond that label of drugs and alcohol. So I had to learn how to be Christ-like. And that was kind of scary stepping into that because I didn't know what that looked like. But it's been the best thing that has happened to me. He is my father. He is someone that I turn to. He has healed me. And now I have the opportunities to be able to help women and to be able to help them to that are coming into this program to be able to say, you can do it. You can be that godly mother. You can raise these kids. You can be who God has called you to be. So that is my passion today is to be able to help women and to overcome these traumas and things in, in their life that they've had to deal with. You know, my name's Kane Riggs. I'm the director at 633 Recovery Ranch. And, uh, you know, uh, I had a pretty good life growing up. You know, uh, my folks are still together today, uh, you know, but uh, addiction is no respecter of persons. And, uh, you know, I, I started dabbling with drugs and alcohol at, at 11, 12 years old. And, you know, I really didn't have any intentions of, of being an alcoholic or a drug addict. But, you know, when uh, when addiction gets it, gets you in its grips, it just don't turn loose, and it's no respecter of person. And so, you know, uh, 20 years of addiction, and, you know, I uh, got to the point uh, that I was just sick and tired of being sick and tired. Uh, I couldn't stand myself. Nobody else could really stand me either. And, uh, you know, when Heather's mom hung herself, uh, you know, I never will forget that night that— uh, you know, I got the call that next morning. I'd been out partying, and, and I'd answered the phone. Heather had been trying to call me all night, and her mom was in the hospital after hanging herself. And, you know, there's something about when you go to a, when you go to a, a, a hospital and you walk in there, somebody's on a life support machine, and, you know, they got dog chain marks around their neck where they've hung themselves. And, you know, and that's when our life really became to, to be real, you know, that – that something something had to change, you know, and I can still remember it that day that when I was walking out of that hospital and, and we was walking out and, and she was crying, we was all upset, and I can still remember the place in the sidewalk that I was looking at, and I just told her I'm done. I'm done selling drugs. I'm done being a drug addict. I'm just done. And, you know, I, 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 didn't, I didn't say I want to give my life to Jesus, none of that, but... You know, five days rocked along, and, and I was clean for five days and, uh, you know, had some problems with, with some family members of hers. And, man, there was, a, there was a shootout that occurred, and it just got really bad. And, uh, you know, the, the, I, I seen the grace of God work in my life that night that I didn't go to jail. And when that night, when that night at the end of that night, when the, when the police was all gone and the smoke cleared, you know, I, I went to an old preacher's house that, that was my preacher when I was a little boy. And, and uh, you know, I just knocked on the door and I was just crying. I had Willie Nelson braids and I'm covered in tattoos and piercings everywhere. And I just told him, preacher, I need Jesus. And, you know, he, he brought me in the house, him and his wife. And, and they, they was older and up in their years. And, and they just got me down in the floor, man. And they started praying for me. And, you know, I knew something happened. And, and the only thing I could remember is when I walked out of that house that night, I just felt like I got lighter, that all that heaviness, all that weight had been lifted up off of me. And, uh, you know, the only thing I really remember that we prayed together, but he read me Romans 10, 9. He said, son, if you'll believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, he said, he'll save you. And he said, if you believe that right there and you'll pray this prayer, he said, the Lord will save you. You know, that's what I've done that night uh, I went on to the bar that night, and you want to talk about a miserable night at the, at the, at the club. You know, I'd been in the clubs for, for years, and, and I was in there, and there was more free drugs and booze there that night. And I told all my friends, you know, hey, I've got Jesus. And, and they're trying to figure out, what, what's he on this time? What, what's really going on with him? I've told them a lot of things and sold them a lot of dope, and, but I never told them that, you know, that, that Jesus, that, that I had Jesus. And, you know, I almost got sick that night, and uh, at the end of the show, uh, I thought, you know, they was telling me, oh, Jesus ain't got nothing for you. And I thought, well, I, I, at the end, I was so sick. I thought, well, maybe they're right. And I, I went home, and, and I got the Bible out. You know, I'd been reading the Bible for a couple of nights before that, maybe five nights. And I would just sit in there and read the Bible, and I would cry before I got saved. And she would come in, and I would run her out of the room and cuss and, and fuss at her, you know, and because God was dealing with my heart. And... Uh, you know, uh, I went home that night, and I thought, maybe they're right, man. Maybe, maybe, maybe Jesus don't know me. Maybe this is all deal. But, you know, I got the Bible out again that night, and I began to read it. And, 
and it just lifted up off of me. And Saturday night rolled around, and I'm pretty hard-headed. I went back to the club that night to play music. I thought, you know, it's okay. I can play music as long as I ain't getting high and I ain't getting drunk and I ain't doing things I'm not supposed to. But, you know, that, that don't go very good. The Spirit of God in, 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 in there just don't, don't go good together. And same thing happened that night. I got felt like I was going to get sick. And, you know, I throwed up in the bar lots of times, and I've been thrown out for that. But, you know, I, 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 it was just a, a different feeling, just a heavy, sick feeling. And, you know, when I went home that night, uh, I, I, I got the Bible out and I began to read it. I went to church the next morning. It was Sunday morning. Uh, I stopped and bought me a little Bible on the way and uh, made $200 playing in the clubs that weekend. And, and uh, I put that money in the offering. And, you know, we've been, we've been going for Jesus ever since. And, uh, you know, uh, God's put it on our heart to help men and women. You know, when we got clean and sober, we wanted everybody that we know to get clean and sober. And so that's been our mission is that uh, we want to see people come off the streets. We want them clean and sober. And so we know that Jesus is the, he's the only way to do that. And so Jesus is the answer. Uh, now we have uh, what is now 633, and uh, we, it's a property with 92 beds. It's a very nice facility. You know, we're going from right now from 18 beds to 92 beds. Uh, we'll have 60 beds for men. We'll have 16 transitional living beds and 16 beds for women. And, you know, we, we got that place on faith. You know, we didn't have the money. We just began to pray and began to believe. And, you know, God makes the impossible possible. And so we're just excited about the things that God's doing in recovery. Friends, I know many of you are probably just like us. You've, you've received a lot of poison promises. Mm -hmm. The enemy has seduced you into thinking that maybe what you're doing is okay. Mm -hmm. And that maybe you're not even an addict. You're watching this and maybe you have a loved one that's an addict and you're thinking about, boy, they need to hear this. But, you know, everybody in this world has been seduced by mm -hmm. the devil. Mm -hmm has been spoken lies to and make them think that what they're doing or maybe what they want to do is going to bring them that peace and that right. happiness. The Bible does say he's a father of lies, and he is. And Jesus is your good shepherd. And he said, my sheep know my voice and follow. He speaks to us and gives us comforting words, encouraging words. He gives us precious promises. And so if you would like to have that new life right now and with Jesus, just say this prayer. And we're just going to agree in prayer that you're going to turn your life mm, over to yes. Jesus. Don't be seduced by that mm. liar anymore. We're not anymore. We're sick and tired of, of all the havoc that he has brought in our lives. And we love living for Jesus. And you will too. Not saying that you won't have any problems because you'll have them, but you'll have the Holy Spirit Amen. who will yes. help you and comfort you and guide you. Just say, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus forgive me of my sins. Forgive, forgive me, me of my, my sins. sins. I'm willing to leave the old life behind. I'm, I'm willing, willing to, to leave, leave the old life behind. And live for you. And live, live for you. With my whole heart. With, with my, my whole heart. heart. Thank you, Jesus. Thank, Thank you, Jesus. I love you. I, I love, love you. you. Amen. 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 Now, friends, uh, get into church and read your Bible. Talk with the one who loves you and who died for you, which is Jesus. Psalms 107.2 says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. So now... Since you can walk the walk, go brag on Jesus. <laughs> yes, yes, amen. You know, the reason we do this is because you are, each one of you are very important mm. to us. Oh, yes. And we want so much to hear from you. I so know, if, you've, yes. if you've experienced a life change or God's done something in your life um, since listening to this show and saying that prayer, we would love to hear yes. about it. And if you have any questions, just reach out to us and we will answer your questions. Um, there's a, if you'll go to our website, it's addictionfreetv.com and click on the email button and you can send us a message. Also, we would love to have your prayers. Um, we are airing on um, hundreds of uh, millions of homes in several TV networks across the United States. And also, uh, Candy did talk about we, we would love to have you as a partner or, or if you just want to donate one time. And there is a donate button on our website, too. And we'd love to have you as a partner. And thank you to all our partners that are already supporting yes, us. Yes. Again, it's recoverytodaytv.com. Amen. Yes. And remember, Jesus loves you. 
And we love you, too. Yes. That's why we're doing this show. And we do hope to hear from you. Remember, recovery is possible today and every day, the shepherd's way. Hello, my name is Becky Brewer, and I have a ministry more than a mugshot. And I have that ministry because I was incarcerated in five states across the country. I now do a recovery meeting at Lakeview Assembly of God in Hot Springs, Arkansas, every Monday night from 530 to 630. And I do this. It's biblical. We put the word of God in our everyday life. We apply the word of God to recovery uh, and how to break free. It's break free recovery group Monday night. Lakeview Assembly of God, 530 to 630. Come join us and let's share freedom through Christ together. Thank you. My name is Tim Bumpus. I am the president of Project New Start Treatment Center in Newport, Arkansas. We run a men's treatment center and a women's treatment center. We also have a pregnancy center. We just opened up a home for mothers with their children to come to treatment. And we also have a transition homes after you graduate. We put you in an apartment. We help you get a job. If you want to get your life together, we have a perfect place to do that. If you need us, give us a call at 870-523-8413. Or go to our website at projectnewstart.org. Thank you and God bless you. Uh, Shalom is a place in life where nothing is missing and nothing is broken. And so what we offer is a nine month residential program. We do have a men's center and we have a women's center and those two are separate, but we offer a nine month program and our prayer for those who are coming into it is that through a relationship with Jesus Christ, they would more and more begin to live a life where all of the missing parts of their life are brought back together and all of the broken parts of their life are mended because we truly believe that Jesus has the power to bind up the brokenhearted and to restore all the things that are lost as part of addiction. Tell me how you came to know me. Was it at some preacher's plea? Were you all bound up with worry? When he came to set you free, did it take you your whole lifetime to release the debt you owe? Did you answer him the first time and relinquish all control? I need to hear somebody testify. I need to hear somebody say. Hello, friends. Thank you for joining our show today, Recovery Today with Candy Rose and Friends. Barbara, Becky, and I thank you. And we hope you'll come back every week if you can. Our TV show airs not only across the United States, but also worldwide, 200 nations, and also podcasts and radio. Remember, Jesus loves you, and so do we. 